The Story of Kronika by yours truly, The Early Years. The story of Kronika begins in Fairyland in the year 488 of Council Era, when two young fairies, who had already been qualified fairies for over a century, Solaris and his wife Luna, had just welcomed their newborn Twinkler into the world. They had a newborn daughter, who they temporarily named Astra, as they didn't know what her magical ability was going to be yet. Solaris used his magic to raise the sun in the morning and set it at night. Luna used her magic to raise the moon at night and lower it in the morning. So lower it at daybreak. As Astra had only just come out of her star pod, she was too young yet for her magic to show itself. After a year of not showing any signs of magical ability, Astra finally started to develop some magic. But she was only but as she was only a year old, it was unclear which one of her powers would latch on to her. She was display that should be displaying. She was displaying three at once, including levitation and time manipulation. As she stopped the kitchen clock in that of their house. By the time she was three, the time manipulation ability had chosen her as its holder. As she briefly disappeared into a portal before reappearing and landing on her feet. I got my power! She said excitedly. Luna picked her up. Yes, Kronika, but you need to be careful with it, she told her. Kronika smiled up at her. I like that name, she said. Now that Kronika had her magical ability, she had earned herself an official name, which she was happy with. Solaris and Luna took her to see the council, who were surprised to learn that their little twinklet had been chosen by the time magic and tested her on the strength of her magic. Now, Kronika, you must swear never to mess with time in any way, they warned her. I swear, Mr. Council Leader, sir, replied Kronika. As the years passed, Kronika started learning to hone and control her magic so it wouldn't take her over. By the time she graduated fairy school and was ready for a part-time job in fairyland, which was easy, as she was hired by the council as their time guard to keep time flowing con consistently, which she did as per her magic. Within the next ten years, this was assigned as her full-time job, which she accepted and started monitoring history to check that nothing had been changed. On her 490th birthday, she got her wing, her wand and her wings. And she were, as she was the time fairy, her wand had a clock head that measured the time in decades, centuries and millennia. She was also now studying towards her twinkling in 22 years' time. Twinkling and First Mission Kronika have waited 512 years for this day, and it was finally here. Solaris and Luna were there to proudly watch their daughter twinkle and become a fully-fledged fairy. She was standing before the council She was standing before the council as they asked her a series of questions to determine her worthiness of the confirmation into the fairyland community. 
as she answered the last question confirming her loyalty to all fairies. They performed the ceremony, and she was finally of age in the fairy world. While this was going on, two of her neighbours, Sirius and Starla, had just had a little twinklet named Illyria, and yes, that was her official name, as this was modern fairyland. She was very pleased for them, and thought Illyria was the cutest little twinkler she'd ever seen. Four years later, she was summoned by the council for her mission briefing, as they were sending her into the, out into the human world. She was to be located in medieval England in the year 1325 as a monitor to observe the happenings, only intervening when she noticed any illegal changes starting to happen. After swearing she'd only reveal herself in such an emergency, she magically transformed into a medieval woman and stepped through their portal into the time period, where she blended in very well without arousing suspicion of any form of magic. She kept a watchful eye on the landscape from her watchtower for the next year and a half, without any disruptions taking place. It was in the second year of her mission that she noticed something that started to alter the period. Someone turned up with medication to cure a cold a child had come down with. Knowing the child was supposed to die from this illness, she acted on the emergency by revealing her true form to stop the mysterious traveller from reaching the child with the medication. She got there just, in, just as he arrived and stopped him. Excuse me, young man. Can I see some identification? she demanded. The traveller showed her his ID card. Maxwell Swan, born 1976, she questioned. That's right, replied Max. You were born in 20th century, in 20th century, she asked him. Yes, ma'am, replied Max. What year are you from? She asked. I'm from the year 2020. Replied Max. You're visiting from the 21st century? She demanded. Yes, replied Max. And you were going to interfere with this sick boy's death by giving him these? Cold and flu pills from your era? She demanded. I was going to save his life, replied Max. I cannot allow you to commit such an act, she scolded. Why not? asked Max. Three reasons come to mind. The first of which is I'm Chronicle the Time Fairy, on a mission from my council to protect history from being tampered with. The second of which is that boy in there is supposed to lose his life to that illness. And the last of which is by bringing medication back in time from the future to give to the child are seriously breaching the laws of time and by extension that section of the fairy code she scolded but i'm not a fairy replied max no but as a human breaking the code you fall subject to that section of said code she scolded she confiscated Max's time machine, along with the pills, sending them back to the sending them to the fairy council, before placing a magical bubble around him. What are you doing? he asked. Maxwell Swan, as a representative of the fairies, I'm arresting you for the attempted alteration of history in fourteenth century. 
on top of meddling with time by way of that machine of yours. She scolded before returning, before resuming her disguised form and escorting her detainee through the portal back to Fairyland and handing him over to the FCTF for his crimes against time and the fairy code. That's him taken care of, she sighed with relief, before reporting her discovery to the council, who thanked her for the reports. and commended her for catching such a dangerous criminal. She then donned the colonial American disguise and stepped through the next portal to America in the 1700s to continue her mission in a different time and place on Earth. The next decade went by and she Stop dozens more alterations to history from being made before her mission ended. After over a decade, and she returned home for her congratulatory address and much needed rest. Working for the Fairy Code, ta working for the Fairy Code Task Force. Two years later, as Kronika was keeping time consistent in Fairyland, she was summoned by the Fairy Code Task Force and offered a spot on the team, which she graciously accepted, and as per her magic, she was appointed Fairyland's own agent of time, meaning from then on, any time-related mission would be given to her by Chief Fluttercatch. And as such, she was immediately sent on a mission for the force to Victorian London to track down and capture some rebellious fairies who hijacked time travel magic before she was appointed. So, disguised as a Victorian civilian, she stepped through the portal into London, 1835 to begin hunting down those naughty fairies. It wasn't long before she saw them with human husbands and hybrid children. Detecting this as a major breach of the fairy code, she revealed herself to them and arrested them all on the charges of falling in love with and marrying and crossbreeding with humans, which all fell under the category of breaking the most important section of the fairy code, which had forbidden any fairy to fall in love with, marry and have children with humans. This meant all of these fairies were subject to the death penalty when she brought them in for their crimes. She resumed her civilian form, apologised to their husbands for the inconvenience, and escorted her prisoners back to Fairyland, wiping the men's memories clean of the incident. Upon returning home, she quickly donned her police uniform and marched her detainees into the station where they were booked for their crimes and properly charged before being stripped of their magic and jailed. They were sentenced to death three years later by dusting, meaning they were burned to stardust and disposed of. The Final Days As Kronika reached middle age for fairies at the age of 1024, she decided to leave the, uh, the FCTF to pursue her own life instead of working for either the council or the task force 
but was unable to find another job until five years of this. Until after five years of this, she accepted one last mission from the council and was dispatched to monitor the Salem witch trials for two years of a ten-year period. She did this quite successfully, without either running into trouble herself or having to keep history consistent. That was until another time traveller appeared from the future and tried to rescue a woman from being drowned but she stopped him. Convincing him not to interfere without having to reveal herself. Before he went home, he witnessed her being shoved off a cliff for witchcraft, revealing her true form to save her life before fluttering over to watch him disappear. As she resumed her human civilian form before changing the clothes for Victorian attire, she moved on to London, 1852, where she met and began helping Simon Keynes, a young man, to move into his new home, but showed no signs of interest in him. That was until a few days later, when she forgot her mission briefing and rebelled against the fairy code by falling in love with Simon and moved in with him. They lived together happily for a year, and in December 1853, she became pregnant with their first child. It was the birth of their half-blood son Milton in September 1854, that this caught the attention of the FCTF as they came flying into the Keynes household and arrested her for breaching the section of the fairy code, forbidding fairies to fall in love with, marry, and crossbreed with humans. She managed to seal her love inside her son, and got Simon to promise not to tell him any... No, oh, sorry. So of his half-blood heritage, until he turned 18. She was then escorted back to Fairyland, where she was put through the booking process. She was then reviewed because of her profile and her previous work for both the Force and the Council. After that, she spent four years in prison before having her death before having the death penalty passed on her, and promptly being executed by the draining of her magic and then being burnt into stardust. And that, my friends, was indeed the story of Chronica. You want more things that go bump in the night next? Well, you got it. Until then, thanks for watching.